Hello class, this uh, video substitutes the class that we had we had to have this morning. We were supposed to have this morning and unfortunately got disrupted because of my internet connection. My apologies again for that. Uh, in this video, I will solve the questions uh, that are available on Moodle for chapter five. And then there would be a subsequent video uh, or multiple subsequent videos that cover chapter 14, questions on chapter 14. Uh, both of them would be a screencast. So let's get started and work on this question, which is the first question on chapter five. Uh, an airline wants to monitor the performance of their baggage handling crew on the daily flight from Oklahoma City to Dallas that is always filled to its 140 passengers capacity. They track the number of passengers that lose bags each flight for a two weeks period. The data are displayed in the following table. Determine uh, control limits for the appropriate chart and indicate any points that are out of control. Okay, so uh, we talked about it in class. Remember we said that this is a P chart. Uh, a problem because we are not really interested in the number of bags we are interested in the status of baggage uh, handling if it's a uh, if, if any bags are lost or not lost uh, so if it's a uh, if we have lost bags it is a defect uh, remember we gave the example of cancer non-cancer smoker non-smoker defective non-defective this is also an, an example of a dichotomous situation in which we are interested only in the proportion of defects we want to calculate the p-value the proportion or percentage of defects and then see if this uh, percentage is in control so now uh, first thing that i need to do is to calculate a uh, p-value for each of these days. Remember we know that our n, our sample size is 140 because we have 140 passengers and it's filled to its capacity. So I take a note of that here. I say that sample size or n is 140. And then in order to calculate the p-value for each day, I divide the number of bags lost by this 140. So for day one, for example, it's gonna be B8, which includes uh, the number of bags lost for day one, divided by this 140. But remember from our Excel workshops, since I want to drag this down and copy it all the way, I don't want this denominator to change. So that's why I need to lock it or basically use the absolute cell reference. I put a dollar sign behind B and dollar sign behind 23. So it's the formula is gonna be B8 divided by dollar B dollar 23. And I copy this down all the way to the last day or day 21, okay? So this is gonna be my P value and let me make the format same as the table. And then the next thing that I need to go ahead and calculate is based on this p-value, I need to go ahead and calculate p-bar. Uh, p-bar is basically the average of all these p-values. So I have 14 proportions and the average of all these proportions is gonna be my uh, p-bar. Uh, basically, if I add all these values and divide them by 14, it gives me my p-bar in Excel. The formula that I use is average. Uh, so it's going to be equal sign average. And the argument is going to be C8 to C21. That includes all my values of P or proportion. So, so far, so good. I have my p-bar. I have all my p-values. And I need to go ahead and calculate my UCL and LCL. Let's see what are the formula. So in this study guide that is available to you, if you go to chapter five in the formula, key formula, you see that the upper control limit and lower control limit for P bar are given by these two formula. So let's take a note of these formula in our sheet here and see if we can use them later. So this is my upper control limit. Let's put it somewhere around here. And then I have my 
lower control limit let's put it here and then I have my uh, S sub P remember in this formula UCL is P bar plus 3 times S sub P I already calculated P bar but I need to do S sub P I need to calculate S sub P as well so let's copy this formula as well and see if we can use these three to build our chart okay so upper control limit is p bar plus three times s sub p i have my p bar so i need to go ahead and calculate s sub p first so s sub p is this formula square root of p bar one minus p bar over n uh, this is how i write it in excel s q r t takes care of this square root open prints and then p bar one minus p bar this is p bar times one minus p bar divided by n close friends okay so basically i translated this formula into excel language it's going to be a squ square root of b24 which is p bar one minus p24 which is one minus p bar divided by b23 which is n so that's my S sub P. Now I can go ahead and use these two formula to calculate UCLP and LCLP. So for UCLP, I know that my formula is P bar plus three times S sub P. P bar is right here, plus three times S sub P. So my formula is gonna be B24 plus three times B25. This is P bar, this is S sub P and my formula for lcl is going to be exactly the same formula with a minus sign so it's going to be p bar minus three times s sub p okay so b24 minus three times b25 will give me my lcl one quick caveat here uh, your lcl is negative so you should assume that it is zero okay so we assume zero here this is important we need to be careful about LCL okay so now next step is to build my chart I need to go ahead and build my chart uh, I need to build the three lines that make my chart the, first, the three lines are upper control limit middle line and lower control limit so my UCL P and my LCLP these are the upper and lower control limits and the middle line is basically P bar so I need three uh, columns with all the same values same values same values of Y basically for different X's 1 to 14 in a if you, if you consider a Cartesian set so UCL is this I just copy this value and right click paste special only paste the values i don't need the formula to because it will mess up all my uh, tables lcl is negative so we should assume zero we just i just put a zero here and my p bar is this value so i copy it and i paste only the values again okay so as i mentioned i copy this and paste it for all these 14 days all values the same for these 14 days okay so let's take care of the cosmetics as well these four are <coughs> the uh, these four columns are basically the columns that constitute the build my for my chart okay so I go ahead select them go to insert go to charts area here and then go to line chart and I select a line chart with markers okay so one more time I go to insert I go to the chart area I go click on line chart and I select a line chart with markers okay this is going to be my uh, P chart so let's take a look here this is uh, let me change the title as well this is my P chart 
you see that this is UCL and LCL and it seems as if all the values of P on this blue line are under UCL and above LCL. So it seems that everything is in control and we do not have any points that are out of control. Okay. So this basically concludes the first question. Let's move on to the second question, question 5-2, and let's see if we can go ahead and solve that. Okay, now let's move to question number 2 from chapter 5. Uh, Floyd Electric is fabricating flanges for a new electric electrical motor. The flange, the flange is set to be 25 millimeters in diameter with an upper tolerance limit of 26.5 millimeters and a lower tolerance limit of 23.5 millimeters. Bill Floyd took a sample consisting of 10 flanges measure the diameter and record the observations in the table. What is Floyd Electric's process capability? Okay, so uh, first thing that we need to take a note of is that the flange is set to be 25 millimeters, meaning that the target value here, target value is 25 millimeters, okay? Uh, meaning that your customer wants uh, ideally wants uh, flanges that are exactly 25 millimeters with which is not possible in the real world because of the uh, limitations of machines that are making them and so on and measurement devices that are measuring the uh, diameter and so on and so forth therefore they accept anywhere between 23.5 to 26.5 so basically their utl or the upper tolerance limit or upper specification limit is 26.5 and their LTL or lower tolerance limit or lower specification limit is 23.5. I get these values from here and here. Okay, so now uh, the question is asking if the Floyd electric process is a capable process. Basically, we want to calculate the process capability uh, ratio or index, okay? First thing that I need to do is to calculate the mean, the mean of all these values, and to see if the mean is on target, okay? So the mean of my process in millimeters would be the average of all these values okay so I go ahead and calculate the average of all these values and see that it is 25.157 okay and it's see I see that it is not uh, on target so my process mean is a little off target so uh, I need to uh, keep this in mind while I'm using the formula for process capability so I go to I'm sorry. I go to uh, chapter 5 formula and look for process capability formula. So this is the process capability ratio. Remember we use this whenever our uh, process is exactly on target. <coughs> I'm sorry. And we use which is not the case in uh, our problem. And we know that our process is not on, on target. Our target is 25 and our process mean is a little off target. So therefore we use this formula, process capability index, uh, that basically takes care of uh, processes that are not exactly on target. Let me copy this formula and bring it here so we can use it for our calculations okay so this is my uh, process capability index uh, right index which is minimum of mu mu is the mean here minus ltl divided by three sigma and the utl minus mu over three sigma you see that in this formula we have a sigma or a standard deviation so i need to go ahead and calculate this sigma of my process as well uh, the formula for sigma is uh, this uh, but in, in Excel we do not need to use this formula Excel has a built-in formula for calculating Sigma 
So, and it's highly recommended, as I mentioned many times in class, it's highly recommended that when you are answering the questions for your final exam, use Excel. Otherwise, it will take you a long time. Uh, you, and the most probably pro, uh, you will have some calculation errors. So formula here is STDEV, uh, standard deviation, and uh, just select a number, uh, the, all the numbers that are uh, sampled. And so the formula is going to be STDEV, and our argument is going to be A6 to J6. Okay. So this is my mean, mu, and this is my sigma. Then I can go ahead and calculate my CPK. CPK is this formula. Uh, I can build it in Excel. It starts with a minimum, so minimum of, and uh, first this value and then this value. So first value is going to be mu minus LTL over 3 sigma. So this is my mu minus my LTL close parens, divided by 3 times sigma. So this will basically build my first argument, mu minus LTL over sigma, B12, which is mu, B10, which is LTL, divided by 3 times B13, which is my sigma. Okay. I use another parentheses here and go about making my second uh, part of this formula. It's going to be UTL. So my UTL is here minus mu over here. Close parents divided by three times sigma. Okay. I close parents here and I use another parentheses to separate this from my first argument okay so once again let's take a look at this formula minimum of b12 minus b10 which is mu minus ltl divided by 3 times b13 which is 3 sigma and b9 minus b12 which is utl minus mu divided by 3 times b13 which is 3 sigma so this gives me my cpk and as I see, my CPK is greater than 1, therefore my process is capable, okay? My process is capable because my CPK is above 1. Okay, so this is question number 2. Now let's move to question number 3, which is another control chart problem. Let's take a look. Uh, the fill size of, for a small bag of peanuts distributed by a popular airline is 50 grams. Uh, the producer wishes to set up a set of control charts for this process and collects the data shown in the table. Develop the proper uh, statistical quality control chart. Is the process in control? Okay, so you see that we have nine samples. And each sample has four observations, meaning that our sample size is four. And uh, we have the number of samples here is nine. Okay, so we need to go about and go about solving this and uh, build a control chart. Okay, as you can see here, the variable of interest in this example is weight. Okay. Uh, the, the fill size for a small bag of peanuts is 50 grams, okay, so it's mass or weight. This 50 grams, so it's a, and we know that it's a continuous variable. So it's, since it's a continuous variable, we build X bar chart and R chart. And again, remember, whenever you have an X bar chart, you sh it should accompany with a R chart, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the formula and values that we need for building an R chart okay so uh, R chart and X bar chart okay so we see that here these are the formula for upper control limit and lower control limits of my uh, X bar chart and my R chart you see that I have X double bar I have a two R bar and so on and so forth so let's build these little by little okay 
first thing is that I need is X double bar and R bar. First, let's go ahead and take care of these and I will come back and uh, read the values for A2, D3 and D4 and build these uh, UCL and LCL. Okay. So first thing that I need to do, as I mentioned, is to calculate the X bar or the mean for each of these values. Okay, so each of these days that I did sampling. So for day one, it is going to be the average of my four observations. Okay, item one, item two, item three, and item four. So it's basically going to be average of B7 to E7. And I copy this, use the same formula for all these nine days to get the X bar for all these nine samples. Second thing that I need to do is to calculate R, which is my range. And range, as you remember, is maximum minus minimum. So I use this formula, maximum of these four values minus minimum of these four values again. And that gives me my R. So basically my formula is maximum B7 to E7 minus minimum B7 colon E7. Okay, that's going to be my R or range. Again, just like X bar, I copy it down all the way and let's change the formatting so our table doesn't look ugly. Okay, so now next thing that I need to do is to calculate X double bar and R bar. Okay, so X double bar is the uh, average of all these X bars. So my formula would be average of G7 to G15, basically all my X bars added together and divided by nine. And also I need to calculate R bar, okay? For R bar, my formula again would be average of all the R values, okay? So it's gonna be average of H7 to H15. Okay, so I calculated my H, X double bar and R bar. Let's see what uh, is the formula for calculating UCL and LCL. Okay, let's go back to our formula chart. We know that our upper control limit for uh, X bar chart is calculated by this formula. So let me take a note of this somewhere around here. And then I know that this is my lower control limit. Let's take a note of that as well. This is my upper and lower control limit for X bar chart, okay? You see that uh, this formula for UCL is X double bar plus A2 R bar. And I have X double bar, I have R bar, but I don't have A2. So let's go ahead and read A2 here. You see that in this uh, table, uh, I have different values for A2, D3, and D4 based on sample size. One thing that is very important here is to note that our sample size is four. It is not nine, okay? This is a very common mistake that you just look here and say that, okay, we have samples from one to nine and see that, say that, okay, my sample size is nine. Sample size is the size of each sample. How big or how small is each sample? Each sample here it has four observations, meaning that it had, the sample size is four. So since sample size is, it's a good idea to take a note of that. So sample size or N is four here. And based on that, if I go to this table, I can see that A2 is 0.73 and D3 and D4 are zero and 228, okay? So let's copy these values and paste them here since we are gonna use them. Uh, okay, let's put them here. This is my mm, for some reason, it's okay. So, okay, this is uh, got a value of my 
A2, my D3, and my D4. D3 is 0, and D4 is 2.28. Let me change the formatting here. So these are basically all the values that I read from this table here. Okay, one more time. Sample size of 4, A2 0.73, D3 0, and D4 2.28. Okay, I just take a note of these values, and then I go about calculating my UCL and LCL X bar. Okay, so my UCL X bar, I use this formula, X double bar plus A2 R bar is equal to X double bar plus A2 times r bar i don't need a parentheses but just to be safe it's a good practice and my lcl x bar is going to be equal to x double bar minus a2 r bar so minus a2 times r bar okay so one more time, the formula for UCL is B17 plus B21 times D times B18, which is X double bar plus A2 R bar. And formula for LCL is B17 minus B21 times B18. So I calculated my UCL and LCL for X bar. Next thing that I need to do is to calculate UCL and LCL for R chart. Remember, there is no X bar chart without an R chart. They always go together. Okay. So UCL and LCL for R. Again, let's take a look at the formula. This is the formula for upper control limit in a uh, R chart. And this is the formula for the lower control limit in an R chart. Okay. So using this, these two formula, UCL is D4 times R bar. It's equal to D4 times R bar. And LCL is D3 times R bar. It's going to be 0, but just for the sake of being consistent, I use the formula. I think I made a mistake. Okay. So my UCL and LCL for R and my UCL and LCL for X bar are all calculated. Next thing that I need to do is to build the actual charts. Okay. So what I need to do is to build three columns here for X bar and build three columns for R chart. So first I need UCL X bar, then I need LCL X bar, and then I need X double bar. These are basically the three lines again, just the way, just the same way that we built our chart for uh, the P chart in the previous question. So I copy these values, UCL and LCL. So this is my UCL X bar. I copy it and again, pay special only values. My LCL is this value. I copy it and pay special only values. And my X double bar, I copy this, paste only the value. And this is, again, going to be the same values of Y for all these different nine X's. So it's just copying down the same constant value all the way. So this is going to be my UCL, LCL, and X double bar for my X bar chart. I need to build the same thing for R chart. So I need to have UCL R. I need to have LCL R and I need to have R bar. Again, I just copy the values of UCL and LCL, UCL R, 
paste special only values LCL I know that it is zero and R bar it's right here I copy it and again paste special only values drag everything down change formatting and I'm almost done okay so these are the values that I calculated let me change the color so we know what values have been calculated and what values were provided to us first let's build the x-bar chart this these are the x-bar values and these three are the three lines these three columns so remember again for non adjacent cells you need to hold down command or if you're using a PC hold down control select X bar a column and uh, three columns for UCL LCL and X double bar I go again to insert line chart and select the line with markers that's going to be my X bar chart let me change the title here this is my X bar chart and then I repeat the same process to build an R chart so this is my UCL LCL and R bar the three lines as well as all my R values the values that are fluctuating basically uh, in the control chart area and then again go to insert insert a line chart and a line chart with markers this is going to be my R chart so let's put them side by side and take a look if everything is in control as you can see that in both charts everything is under control we have nothing below or above UCL and LCL and we have almost the same number of values above the center line as below the center line so my process is in control the answer to this part is the process in control is yes okay so this basically concludes the review for chapter 5 uh, we covered three uh, sample problems from the three main sections of this chapter one is P chart one is X bar chart and R chart and one is process capability okay all the questions that you might see in your final exam would be variations of these questions for example the question number three that we just solved could be used to generate like five six or ten different multiple choice questions okay you can be e you can easily answer all those if you just go go about solving the whole thing in excel build all the charts you can you can answer all the question question could be what is the x double bar what is ucl if the process is in control and so on and so forth okay so this concludes chapter five there would be another subsequent video that i will uh, solve problems of chapter 14 take care for now